Mais dis pas... Non, tu l'as volé Oh la déglingue, j'y crois pas À quoi tu joues là, Ami Qui es-tu, Ami Laisse couler l'eau, ma chérie. Dépêchez ses faces avec. Vous avez quel âge Non, on a 14. You can't keep getting away with it. You can't keep getting away with it. John Doyle in. Heck off, Tommy. Good evening and welcome to Heck Off Kami. You may have noticed that the title of this video is Netflix is selling sex to your kids again, again. And the reason for that is that we actually covered something like this, not necessarily involving children, but something still pretty bad a few months ago. So if you want to check out that video as well, I will leave a link to it in the description because there was important and pertinent information in that video. But I've got a whole new batch of fresh takes for you guys about this particular show. But I will say that this time they are literally selling sex to your children. And we'll talk about why. But the first time I titled a video like that was because my generation caught some of this. But generation Generations younger than me are completely immersed in this culture of streaming and binge watching. They're the Netflix generation. Like they spend much more time just streaming these programs than they do interacting with family or even playing outside. And they're being ruined as a result, not only in terms of things like brain development, uh, their levels of creativity, etc., but their innocence is also being totally corrupted. They're exposed to so much sexualized content in the media that is literally designed to target young children. But then even when parents think that they're doing them a favor, keeping them away from that stuff with something like Netflix, because Netflix is safe, they're given access to things like this or to things like Big Mouth, which is a show that basically acts out pedophilia and encourages children to masturbate. But it's a cartoon, so it's actually just a quirky take on growing up. And it's just all complete garbage. It's evil. And so we have to do something about it. So firstly, we'll talk about what this movie's about, why people are talking about it, and then we'll get into the politics surrounding it and what it means for our culture and the future of our country. Because a lot of people look at stuff like this and they're like, ah, you know, it's just a movie. It's just a TV show. Who cares? I just won't watch. It. And it's like, sure, but you have to understand that media and more broadly speaking, art reflect the culture. They're symptomatic of where we are as a culture. And so the fact that something like this was written and pitched and produced and then approved to be put on Netflix says a lot about the general attitude of our culture towards sexualizing children. And it's getting to a point where we're not going to be able to just say, okay, well, you know, I'll just make sure that my kids don't watch it. That might have worked 15 years ago when porn was a lot harder to find. Kids didn't have unrestricted access to technology everywhere that they go. This stuff was still largely condemned by the culture. It might have worked then. But now we're approaching a point where if it's not on Netflix, it's on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube or Twitter or Snapchat. Like your children literally cannot interact on the Internet in any relevant capacity without being exposed to incredibly sexualized content that is designed to pervert and corrupt them so as to addict them to viewing content like that which will then allow these companies to profit in ad revenue. Keep that in mind. These companies are profiting from getting your young son to spend hours every day watching highly sexualized content and from grooming your young daughter to believe that her value is derived from doing the same thing. And if they're not, then all of their friends are. And if you're still trying to protect them at that point, then you will become the enemy, which is actually a big part of the movie. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But they're being fed this stuff by the media, by their friends, by their teachers even. And the only thing acting as a dissenting voice is you. And of course, you're the only figure who has their best interest at heart. But unfortunately, that doesn't matter. We are outgunned. This is so pervasive in our culture. There's practically no way to shelter our children from it anymore. And we'll talk more about why this is being done, why it's bad, and what we need to do about it. But basically, this movie is called Cuties. And as you can see from the poster, it exists to sexualize children. And the official description of the movie written by Netflix is, 11-year-old Amy starts to rebel against her conservative family's traditions when she becomes fascinated with a free-spirited dance crew. It says that Amy, through her sensual dancing, will ignite awareness of her burgeoning femininity. And of course, the critics love it, which is weird because we're reminded seemingly on a daily basis that Hollywood is definitely not run by pedophiles and their adjacent agents of Satan. But anyways, people rightfully got pretty mad about this. And so Netflix came out on Twitter and apologized because of the artwork and description that they used to promote the film, but not actually the content of the film. And the reason for that is that what Netflix and all of the woke film critics will claim is that this is actually just a commentary on the sexualization of children. But the problem is that the way that it creates that commentary is actually by sexualizing children. So we have to call into question the legitimacy of that claim. Like how exactly is it expressing the negativity of sexualizing young children by having them twerk on stage in extremely revealing clothing. It's not. It's glamorizing it. And we know this because in an interview with the director of the film, the director says that the whole reason she directed this movie is because she grew up with traditional parents and she wanted to explore whether women should have the right to choose who they want to be in this world because apparently even in our culture today, she's not totally free. Add footnote, she is totally free. But as we can see, it's not actually a commentary on the negative effects of sexualizing children, particularly young girls. It's actually an endorsement of that. And if it's perfectly within our culture, 
that does the same. And that's why the most revealing thing about it is the film's description on Netflix. These stories are always about defying the traditions of the family. It's always about a young girl being liberated from the oppressive standards of her family, usually their Christian standards, and is only completely liberated once she sexualizes herself at her young age, in this case, 11 years old. And this, of course, resonates with the young girls who are already skeptical of their parents' moral influence and their arbitrated value framework, as we all are when we're young. But the solution that they're being fed now is to make themselves into a sex object, and because they're choosing to do it, it's empowering and because their parents probably don't want them to, it's even more empowering. It's the archetypal defiance of authority. It's the rejection of the parental tyranny, except this time it's not, hey, you know, evil stepmom doesn't want you to go to the ball. It's, hey, honey, you're 11. Please stop twerking and wearing skimpy outfits to siphon external gratification from strangers. It's not good for you. Well, shut up, mom. If I want to be an object, it's my choice. And the test of whether a choice is good is whether or not I make it, not whether the choice is actually good, because feminism. If you passed out flyers at the Women's March that told them it's empowering to break their legs because it's their body and their choice, they would do it. They'd be working together. You'd be trying to like block one of the cars, like, please don't run over that woman's legs. And they'd be like, oh, you don't think she can drive because she's a woman? Stop trying to control women's bodies. That's why the antagonist in the film is the girl's mother, because she's trying to control, also known as protect or look out for, her daughter. And because of that, the mother is the bad guy. And of course, the broader implication of this is literally that your family is controlling, your family is oppressive. All that matters is you and what you want, so go run off without them. And we've seen this message become increasingly pervasive in our culture. And the reason for that is because they hate the family structure, largely because many of them have had poor relationships with their family members. But also, on a more philosophical level, they hate the family because it is antithetical to their worldview. It is not conducive to their utopian society. They want you liberated from your family. They want you to reject the family and to reject your parents because that's how you destroy Western civilization. That's how you destroy America. Marx wrote about this. They write about this today. The whole idea is, hey, leave your family behind. Make your own rules. Everything is about you. Sell your body. Give in to your desires. Nothing you do is wrong so long as you want to do it. And the result of that is a bunch of autonomous, numb individuals with no ties to anything whose only purpose is basically to consume. And when your only purpose in life is basically to consume, you're not worried about things like family or stable communities in which to prospectively raise a family. You're worried about, hey, why is that guy consuming more than me? Why does he have more than I do? So maybe state enforced equality would be a good thing. Maybe from each according to his ability to each according to his needs, it's actually a good idea. It sure sounds nice. Therefore, my purpose is not my faith, my family, my community, none of that matters. My purpose is myself. My purpose is activism to create that society where the state is God. So it would seem that the messaging of the content will in effect make people's lives more miserable in the long run, but at least the content itself is helpful to pedophiles. Weird how that happened, but yeah. This literally makes it easier for pedophiles. And some of you may have looked into the ways that these pedophiles networks operate like not only you know within governments across the world but also right in front of us and one of the things that they'll do is they'll find home videos posted online of kids in swimsuits uh, and they'll share them with each other with timestamps for when the kids appear to be in a sexual position or in a revealing position but Netflix has saved them that work with this content and so as conservatives and as actually Americans in general we need to seriously consider how long we're going to allow for this type of content to continue to occupy the public domain where it will inexorably target and infect our children because we tend to default to these bumper stickers like free speech equals good Cancel culture equals bad. But things are actually a bit more complicated than that. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as just universally deferring to these abstract principles, especially because doing so has cost us so much ground already. Sometimes there actually do have to be limits on the types of things that people can spread throughout society. And sometimes moral people do have to come together and bring about that by basically canceling things. And if you're afraid of this because my principles, I implore you to consider whether George Washington would have canceled something like this, whether Thomas Jefferson would have canceled something like this. Bro, even and Ronald Reagan probably Bill Clinton would have canceled something like this. And honestly, I would be curious to see the over-under on first-term Barack Obama. The point is that, obviously, we don't believe that everything is okay to promote and spread. So the question is, where do we draw the line? And I could make arguments, and I would make arguments for drawing the lines many, 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 many concessions ago. But since we weren't willing to do that, we have to consider if we're going to draw the line here. We were correct about the slippery slope. It's here. They're sexualizing children. They're reclassifying pedophilia. It's just a preference, just a sexuality. It's not even a mental illness anymore. That would be mean. So the time is now. And if we're not willing to draw the line here and actually do something about it, then we might as well just put down the marker. Because if not here, then nowhere else. We may as well just pack it up and go home. Because if we're unwilling to act, then we're never going to take back the culture, which means we're never going to take back the country. And can you imagine where we would be if we actually took control of the culture? Do you understand that the reason things are getting worse is because we're moving rapidly in the other direction, because we are losing ground. And if we don't do anything about it, then being a conservative 20 years from now is just going to be saying, things like, hey, 
I'm okay with the flintlocks, it's those bolt-action rifles that are the problem. The weapons of war, specifically World War I, have no place in civilian hands. Hey, I just want to return to a traditional society where we were a unified and moral people, you know, like the 2010s. Oh what, you want to give everyone free oxygen because our atmosphere is completely polluted because our elite sold us out to China? Yeah, no thanks, socialist. Hey! I'm okay with kids using recreational heroin. I just think it should be in moderation. Of course, Jesus was black and trans, but he was no necrophile, you stupid liberal. But hey, I don't mind people getting married to their dogs. I just don't want them shove it into my face. Wow, my Rubio 2048 sticker came in the mail. This is gonna look great on the outside of my state-assigned urban pod. And that's the thing, the conservative take is going to stop right there. They're gonna say, hey, there's nothing wrong with young women being groomed into deriving their value from their sexuality, but 11 years old is just too young. Okay, well, what do you think led to that? What led to it is the fact that you didn't care to stand ground at all when this type of content began to be normalized a couple decades ago. Probably because you're like, whoa, naked girl pretty, must touch pee pee, now! And now you're completely... You're coming around. You're coming around now when they're moving on to 11 year olds and now you're trying to have some morality. Now you're trying to have some discipline. Like, hey, that's just too young. Let's go back to 18 year old girls. And it's like, you can't compromise with these people. They're playing for keeps, not for gains. And they're winning. And they're just marching down the field because people like us, so-called conservatives, have failed to do anything about it. And because of all of that, dare I say that getting mad about 11 year old girls being sexualized is almost a cope. For us to be like, what the heck? This is outrageous, I'm so angry about this. I'm so virtuous because I recognize that this is wrong. 11 year old girls shouldn't be sexualized. I'm brave for making this declaration. And it's like, okay, sure. Where were you on everything else though? Where were you on porn? Where were you on same sex marriage? Where were you on birth control? On sex education? On gender identity? On literally everything else? I'll answer for us, we were nowhere. And because of that, we are here. And it's only gonna get worse from here because these people do not stop and they do not compromise. And what that means is that we actually have to take a stand because a society without morality cannot survive. And our society is starving for morality because we have none. And if you're still unsure, if you're thinking, well, no, wait, but what if we do that? Well, then we're just gonna be like the left. No, we're not because we're actually correct and we have morals. And if you're not sure about that, maybe you should take a break and go do your homework and figure out what you actually believe. Because being unsure, being hesitant, being passive, and being pusillanimous, waving our flags and slapping on our bumper stickers, but actually failing to take action when it mattered has led us to where we are now. And if we don't do something about it, we're not going to have a chance in the future. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, share the video with a friend. Also, sign the petition uh, in the description to get this thing taken off Netflix. I don't know how many signatures it has as of now. I think it was like 70,000 last time I checked. But uh, yeah, sign the petition. Also, share the video with a friend, with other conservatives that you want to see me collaborate with. Very epic. That's how we're going to grow. That's how we're going to take over. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Very epic. Okay, thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. Poof.